What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with OnePlus 12 tips and tricks and hidden features. So stay tuned if you want to learn how to get the most out of your device. Now, one of my favorite things about the OnePlus 12 is how much flexibility and options we're getting here with Oxygen OS. Now, if you're not familiar with Oxygen OS, it's basically the version of Android that OnePlus is running. So they've taken Android 14 and basically made it even better here with Oxygen OS. There are so many different customizations you can do here with this device, and I'm looking forward to showing you some of my favorites here in this video. Now the first thing I want to show you is how to customize the status bar up top here. So what we're going to do is pull down the notification shade, go to this button right here for the settings, then from there go to search, and then you're going to type in status, and you'll see right here status bar. So go there, and then from here you can see there's tons of different options to customize this up top here. So the first thing you can do is actually remove certain things that you don't want to see. So for example, maybe you don't want to see the battery percentage. You can disable that. However, that is something that I find personally to be pretty useful. You can also customize the battery percentage as well. So you can see right here that you can go to battery style and instead of a vertical battery, you can do a horizontal one. Or if you want a loop instead, it'll kind of give you an indication on the amount of charge in the device based on that. Or if you want no icon at all, you don't need that either. If you just want the percentage and that's it. We also have a customization here for notification icons. So when you tap on this, you can see that we actually have the ability to just have the number of notifications instead of actually having individual notification icons up top here. Now I don't have any active notifications right now, so that's why you don't see anything. But if you're familiar with Android, typically you get a bunch of icons up top. So it is nice that you can even have that not show up at all if you don't want it. Now we can also add some things too. So real-time network speed is not enabled by default. But if I enable that, we can now see the network speed up top there. So for the status bar, many of these are enabled already by default, so keep that in mind, but know that you can remove pretty much any of these if you want to remove them. Now, some of these don't show up right now, of course, because I don't have, for example, an alarm set, and I don't have the phone in silent or do not disturb, for example, but if I didn't want to see those icons when the phone is in those various modes, I don't have to have them up top here. Now, digging deeper into the settings here with the OnePlus 12, there are so many cool features in this phone that they even made a section here called special features. So when you go to this, you'll see that there's a lot of good stuff here. So I'll give you demonstrations of some of these, but basically we have split view, flexible window, quick return, quick launch, smart sidebar, kids mode, simple mode, and then Zen space. So trying out split view, you can see that you can actually get to this by just swiping up with three fingers. So we'll try that right now. So I'll have the calculator app as one of the apps. And then I can pick my second app. I'm going to pick Chrome. And then now you can see it did a 50-50 split between Chrome and the calculator. Now if I press here, I can actually swap them. So I can switch that around. I can also grab onto this bar right here and switch these around that way as well. And then for the calculator app, you can see these two arrows right there. If I tap there, it's now going to actually put the calculator into its own window here. And then I can move this around and do other things on the device. I can also tap on the calculator like that and it'll expand a little bit. And then if I want to fully exit out of this, I can tap on the X right there and then it disappears. And you can access it on almost any application. You can go in the recent apps section by tapping on this button right there, then go to the three dots right there and then tap on floating window. And then I can see the web browser is now floating here. Now you can learn even more about flexible window in the special features section. So you can see there's also options for button free mode, quick hide window in game. So if you're playing games that could come in handy and then also share via floating window. So when sharing files or content to an app, open the app in a floating window. So that's a really interesting option as well. I also want to show you simple mode here. So this is especially nice for smartphone users that maybe aren't into tech as much as maybe I am myself. But basically, if you enter simple mode, as it's entering right now, you get a very basic version of the phone's operating system. So it's super bare bones, but I can see this being helpful for certain users. And then I almost forgot to show you this, but there's also an option for smart sidebar. So we'll enable that. And then basically with smart sidebar enabled, we now have this bar on the side here. So if you swipe over on that, you'll get a lot of different options here. For example, you can access recent files. You can also access various screenshot options. You can even further edit this too, and you can customize what you want to actually be here. But then even if you go to all, you can actually access all of the various applications installed on the device, 
And there's even additional tools here as well for screenshots and various recordings. And if you want to as well, you can pick up this sidebar and put it on the other side as well. And you can even have it auto hide if you want to too. Now the next thing I want to show you is how to screenshot with the OnePlus 12. So there's actually multiple methods to take a screenshot with this device. So I'll be showing you all of them right now. Now the first way to take a screenshot is very simple. Simply hold the power button down and volume button at the same time, just like that. And it takes the screenshot and then from there, it will then save it to the device. But to see more screenshot settings and abilities, go to the settings, then go to search, type in screenshot, and then go down to right here. And then you'll see there's a bunch of different options. So the first thing here is that we can actually take a screenshot by just swiping three fingers down. So we'll try that right now. And there we go, took the screenshot. So that's very quick and efficient. You can also take a partial screenshot or scrolling screenshot with a three finger touch and hold. There we go. So then from there, I can basically draw a rectangle if I want to select a certain area. I can also make further customizations. I can even translate as well, which is really cool. And then more editing options in the corner as well. So tons of different things you can do here to edit your screenshots, which is really awesome. Then scrolling further down here, you can see there's options for delete original image after editing, delete screenshots after content extraction, screenshot notifications, you can disable that if you want to. And if you don't want the phone to make a sound when taking a screenshot, you also can disable that. So tons of different options here when it comes to taking a screenshot with the OnePlus 12. Now back in the main settings area, if you go over to here, you'll see an option called additional settings. So let's see what all is here. Now the first thing you can customize is the system navigation. Now when you first set up the OnePlus 12, they gave you options on if you want to pick gesture based navigation or the traditional three button navigation. So I chose buttons, but if you want to switch that one way or the other, you can simply go here. And then actually, even with the buttons, you can choose if you want to flip them around here. So if you want to have the recent apps on the right side and back button on the left side, you can do that. That might be better if you're left-handed, for example. But then also there's an option here for gestures. So if you pick that and they'll want you to kind of learn it first. So I don't think one method of navigation is necessarily better than another. I guess if you want to do gesture-based navigation, it's kind of nice that there's nothing here at the bottom of the display. So technically, you're getting more screen real estate here but it really comes down to how you prefer to use your smartphone. You can see that by default, it does actually hide that gesture bar, but if you do wanna have it there, you can add it back in. So nice to have that option. And then there's other customizations here as well. You can also adjust the sensitivity too. So that might need to be adjusted based on the type of screen protector you're using or just if you want it to be more sensitive or less sensitive. But then also under additional settings, there's an option here for accessibility. So if you go there, you can see there's actually some pretty interesting options. So if you want to press the power button to end calls, you can enable that. Just a lot of different abilities here. So I do recommend kind of exploring this section. Also going down here, we have gestures and motions. So a lot of good stuff in here as well. Some of this I showed you already, such as these screenshot methods, but you can see there's screen off gestures. So when the screen is off, use specific gestures on the screen for quick access. So for example, if you want to draw an O, it'll open the camera. So let's try that right now. So the screen is off. I'm going to draw an O. And then now it quickly pulled up the camera. We also have air gestures. So you can actually use a gesture if you want to answer or mute a call. We also have an option for raise to wake. So if the screen's off on the phone, and then you raise it up, it'll turn the screen on right away. So that's not enabled by default, but that's actually a pretty nice feature. We also have lift to ear to answer calls. So it's pretty self-explanatory. We also have auto switch to receiver. So automatically switch to the receiver when you lift your phone to your ear. And then finally we have here flip to mute incoming calls. So maybe you have a call coming in. If you flip the phone over, it'll then put the phone on mute. Now with the OnePlus 12, we have a very large 6.82 inch display, which is excellent, especially when it comes to content consumption. However, it can be very difficult, if not impossible to reach all portions of the operating system when using the phone with just one hand. So thankfully they've actually come up with a cool solution to this, which is also in this additional settings menu and it's called one handed mode. So let's go there. And then we'll enable that. You can see swipe down from the bottom of the screen to enter one-handed mode. Swipe up or tap in the area at the top of the screen to exit. This feature works only when navigation gestures are enabled. So we need to actually go back here, switch over to gestures, then go back to one-handed mode, enable that. 
So just like that, I can easily move the whole display down. This is a really awesome feature, super useful. And then now I can access everything at the top portion of the operating system. I can even grab onto the notification shade and access some of these quick toggles. So that's really great as well. And then to get out of one-handed mode, you just tap outside of the operating system like that. And then now the phone is back to normal. This is also another really interesting one that I don't find too often with smartphones, but schedule power on and off. So you can actually pick a schedule here to power the phone off and on. So I don't know what situations that come in handy, but it is cool that, that is an option here. Now with the OnePlus 12, we're getting a really large 5,400 milliamp hour internal battery. And that's really awesome. But what's even more awesome is that you can actually go to the settings and then go to the battery section here. And then you can actually further customize how the battery works here with the phone. So for example, we have power saving mode. So you can actually turn this on and get way longer battery life out of the device. Now I wouldn't use this every day necessarily, but I would use it in situations where you know you're not gonna be able to recharge the phone anytime soon. But you can see there's options here to enable that. With power saving mode enabled, it's basically cutting out a lot of background tasks and then kind of focusing on the core fundamentals of a smartphone. You can also have it turn on at a specific battery level. So if you want battery saver mode to turn on when the battery gets to 15%, you can do that. So tons of different customizations. We also have super power saving mode, which is pretty self-explanatory, but basically takes things even a step further to further prolong how long your phone's gonna last. You can also access the battery health, so you can see the maximum capacities. So right now it is at 100%. You can also activate smart charging, which will basically give the phone a better charging pattern to further prolong the lifespan of the battery. And then you can also have it stop charging at 80%. This is known to also slow down battery aging, which could come in handy for you. There's also smart rapid charging. So when you charge the device with the included high rate charger, smart rapid charging will increase the charging speed if it detects a situation where you need to charge your device really quickly. Keep in mind though that your device will get a little warm during the charging in that mode. And then we also have reverse wireless charging. So that's really nice too. You can basically charge other phones with this device via wireless charging. And then finally, there are more wireless charging settings right here. So you can try some of these as well. And then there's also more settings too. So you can activate high performance mode with the battery. You can also optimize battery use and then activate sleep standby optimization. So tons of different things here with the battery. Also, I wanna show you a few things that you can do here with the display on the device. So go under display and brightness. You can pick here light or dark mode. You can even pick a schedule for that too. But then also there's screen color mode, so you can pick the colors of the screen. You can also activate natural tone display, which is great, especially towards the end of the day as it makes the display a little bit warmer so that you're not gonna be awake all night from looking at your phone. There's also eye comfort as well, so eye comfort and sleep. So that's similar to natural tone, basically. And then there's also image sharpener, so you can kind of further sharpen images here with that option. There's video color boost. We also have the ability to pick the screen resolution. So by default, it actually does 2376 by 1080, which will give you longer battery life, but you can actually switch the phone to the full high resolution, giving you an even sharper image. So you can see it's quad HD plus. So it doesn't look super different after doing that, but I can definitely tell a slight difference. And this display is really incredible on this phone as it is. So it is kind of a cool option there but you can also do auto select. So it'll automatically switch that. And then you can also have the device intelligently recognize your scene and bring out various details in video and reader apps. Also with this phone, we're getting 120 Hertz refresh rate. And if you want to, you can have it always be in that high refresh rate, or if you want it to be in kind of the standard 60 Hertz, things are going to run a little bit choppier, which isn't really ideal with the device, but you will save a lot of battery life in return. On the other hand, if you want the phone to always be at 120 Hertz, you can pick that too, and then you can see things are super smooth here. So it's really up to you, but if you want to keep it at auto select, that might be the best of both worlds. But this concludes my video on tips, tricks, and hidden features for the OnePlus 12. I hope you enjoyed this video, and most importantly, if you did, give it a thumbs up. But let me know what you think of this device, but this is Kevin here, and I will see you in the next one. Take care and have a great rest of your day.